In this video, we will be solving special right triangles such as these. These are the patterns that we have to memorize. For a 45, 45, 90 triangle like this one, you have two legs and then the hypotenuse. Um, a 45, 45, 90 triangle is automatically isosceles, so these two legs are going to be the same. And then the hypotenuse will be the leg uh, times radical 2. So for example, um, let's say if this was 7, it's, all right, if as soon as I know that one side of this is 7, and uh, this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, then I know the other side is going to be 7, and I know that the hypotenuse is going to be 7 radical 2. All right, that's how the pattern works. The only thing, thing that makes this uh, slightly tricky is when they give us the hypotenuse and it does not involve a radical 2 in it. So for example, um, say if they told us that the hypotenuse was 8 and then uh, we're supposed to find the legs. Well, using the pattern, it goes leg, leg, and then leg radical 2. So you just sort of make a little formula out of it, make an equation out of it using the value that you're given. If you solve this for x, that would mean dividing both sides by radical 2. Okay, um, that way these are going to go away. That leaves you with x is equal to 8 over radical 2. And then we would rationalize the denominator by doing uh, multiplying the numerator and denominator by radical 2. That will give us 8 radical 2 over 2 and uh, 8 divided by 2 is 4, so that's 4 radical 2. Radical 2 times radical 2 is 2. Alright, so that would tell us that both of these were 4 radical 2. And that's about as hard as that gets. The other pattern involves the 30, 60, 90 triangle where you have uh, these two different angles, so therefore the legs are going to be two different sizes. The short leg is across from the 30, the long leg is across from the 60. I recommend focusing on the short leg because uh, we'll just call that x. Whatever the short leg is, the hypotenuse is going to be double that. Whatever the short leg is, the long leg will be that times radical 3. So um, for example, uh, if the short leg was 8, the hypotenuse should be double that. So the hypotenuse is going to be 16. If you take this and, and uh, multiply it by radical 3, that should give you the long leg. So this would be 8 radical 3. Okay. Um, if they give us the hypotenuse, that's still pretty simple. Uh, say if they told us that the hypotenuse was, let's say, 12. Um, the short leg is going to be half that since the hypotenuse is double the short leg. So if they give us the hypotenuse, then I know that the short leg must be 6. And then from there, I know that the long leg must be 6 radical 3. So that's pretty easy. Uh, the only thing that is slightly tricky is when they give you the long leg and it does not have a radical 3 on it. So for example, if they told us that the long leg was 12 and we're supposed to find these other two things. Um, so in that situation, I would recommend just setting up the pattern. Short leg, that's x. The hypotenuse, that's 2x. And the long leg is x radical 3. So make an equation using the value that you have and solve for it. So if I wanted to solve this for x, I would end up dividing both sides by radical 3. So that's going to give me x equals 12 over radical 3. Uh, I would rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom by radical 3. That's going to give me 12 radical 3 over 3. Again, radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. And uh, 12 divided by 3 is 4. So that would give me 4 radical 3 for the answer. Okay, so rewind, rewind. So uh, I just found x. So that tells me that this is 4 radical 3. 
Now the hypotenuse has got to be double that. Okay, in other words, it's got to be 2 times 4 radical 3. So that would be 8 radical 3. And there we solved it. Okay, so let's take that background knowledge and solve these questions. Now, I see this is 60, so that means this must be the 30. That means that this is the short leg right here. So um, if this is the short leg, the hypotenuse should be double that. Um, so if I double this, that's going to give me 8 radical 3. Now, for the long leg, you're supposed to take the short leg and then multiply it by radical 3. So if I take the short leg and then I multiply that by radical 3, then that should give me the long leg. Uh, well, radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. So the answer here should be 12. Okay, so basically x is equal to 12 and y was equal to 8 radical 3. Um, by the way, this is going to come up a lot. When I, when I say radical 3 times radical 3 is 3, um, you know, uh, radical 3 times radical 3 is radical 9, but the square root of 9 is 3. I don't want to have to think through that extra step every time, so I have internalized the fact that if I have a radical times itself, that number is going to come out. Anyways, oh, let's keep going. Okay, looking at this one, see how these are marked the same isosceles? That tells me that this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay, so the pattern is um, leg, leg, leg radical 2. So it's like this is x, this is x, and this is x radical 2. That means the x must be 6 because it's in front of the radical 2. So this must be 6. Um, now these are the same, so this must also be 6 over here. Okay, so x is 6 and y is 6. All right, what about number 3? I see the 30, so that means this is 60. Um, now, I always start with the short leg, but I don't know what the short leg is. But I know that uh, if I had the short leg, the hypotenuse should be double. All right? That means if I go back the other way, the short leg must be half of this. So half of 6 radical 3 is 3 radical 3. Okay, so if I double it, I would get 6 radical 3, so I know that's correct. Now, the long leg, uh, I'm just going to write down this little tiny formula here. The long leg is always the short leg times radical 3. So this long leg, y, is going to equal the short leg, all right, and here the short leg is 3 radical 3, that's the short leg, times radical 3, all right, short leg times radical 3. So I'm going to have this radical 3 sort of showing up twice, um, but that's, I'm uh, just bringing down that 3. Now radical 3 times radical 3 is 3, as we discussed, so this is going to equal 9. So y equals 9 and x equals 3 radical 3. Okay, uh, what's next? All right, looking at number 4. I see this is a 60, so that means that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Um, these are marked the same, so this must be also a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Um, anyway, they gave me the hypotenuse is 60. I'm sorry, the hypotenuse is 16. So the short leg must be half of that. So this must be 8. All right, half of the hypotenuse. Um, now, to get the long leg, I do the short leg times radical 3. So this must be 8 times radical 3. All right, so x is equal to 8 and y is equal to 8 radical 3. Okay, looking at number 5. 
what do we have here? So um, let's see. I've got my 30. So this must be 60. So I'm going to look at this triangle down here. Now they were kind enough to give us the short leg across from the 30. Uh, if I want to get the hypotenuse, I double this. So this x must be 24. If I want to get the long leg, you take this and you multiply by radical 3. So this must be 12 times radical 3. Now this is a rectangle, so that means uh, this side and this side are the same. So this must be 12 radical 3. Okay, so x is equal to 24 and y is equal to 12 radical 3. All right, we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Um, these are the same. So um, we're looking at a square, basically. So if this is 15, then this is 15. Whoa. All right, that's going to bug me. Um, everything is 15. All right, it's a square. So this is going to be 15 over there as well. Now, um, the pattern goes, the hypotenuse should be leg times radical 2. So this should be 15 times radical 2. So there you go. X is 15 radical 2, and Y is 15. All right, looking at number 7. Um, this is 60, so this must be 30. All right, that means this is the short leg right there okay and uh, if we know the short leg if we want the hypotenuse we're supposed to double this so that means this is going to be 10 radical 3 now if we want the long leg we need to take the short leg and multiply radical 3 by it so if I want the long leg um, I'm gonna take my short leg 5 radical 3 and then I'm going to multiply that by radical 3. So it's like 5 radical 3, radical 3. Um, well, radical 3 times radical 3 is just 3. So then we have 5 times 3, which is 15. So y is 15, and x is 10 radical 3. OK, uh, see all these? 90 degree angles and this is 45 degrees so that means we have uh, isosceles so that means this is a square again so if this is 8 then this is going to be 8 and uh, this should be 8 radical 2 so that's it x is 8 and y is 8 radical 2 okay um, the hypotenuse is 4 radical 2, which means the two legs should simply be 4. So this should be 4, and this should be 4. 4, 4, 4 radical 2. That's the pattern. Now we need to jump over to this other triangle, which is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This one is going to be a little bit more tricky. Um, in fact, I think I'll recopy it. Now here I've taken this triangle on the left and I just brought it down separate so you won't be confused by what's going on over here. Now um, from the pattern that we have memorized, I usually uh, will say x, 2x, and x radical 3. Now for this particular problem, because x has already been used for something else, I'm just going to use a different variable. So um, for example, I'll use n instead of x. So the short leg would be n. The hypotenuse should be 2n. And uh, the long leg should be n radical 3. So my suggestion is take the side that has an actual value given, make an equation out of it, and solve it. So basically what I have here is um, n radical 3 is equal to 4. If I were to divide both sides by radical 3, okay, then that's going to give me n is equal to 4 radical 3. 
um, sorry, n is going to equal to 4 over radical 3 for now. OK, so fine, that's what n is. Um, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for y. y is going to equal 2 times n. So that's going to be 2 times 4 over radical 3. That's what y is. So what's that? Um, well, that'll be 8 over radical 3. OK, because this is like 2 over 1. And I'm just multiplying straight across. So that's like 8 over radical 3. So this is basically the answer. This is the value of y. But um, usually we want to rationalize the denominator. So what we should do is go ahead and multiply the numerator and denominator by radical 3. So if we do that, um, that's going to give us 8 radical 3 over 3. So that is the value of y. So just to summarize, um, you know, we found x early on. So x was 4. And then now we found the value of y, which turned out to be 8 radical 3 over 3. OK, Pythagorean triples are uh, sets of numbers that would represent the sides of a right triangle. So um, they will satisfy the Pythagorean theorem, which says leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So for example, um, the triple 3, 4, 5, if I do um, 3 squared plus 4 squared, that's going to equal 5 squared. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. Check it out. This would make 9 plus 16, and that does equal 25. And that's going to be the case for all three of these. So um, any set of three numbers that fits the Pythagorean theorem, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, will form a right triangle. So these are the most common ones that, um, because of the way they make whole numbers. So they show up over and over and over again on standardized tests and in different situations. So it's worth memorizing. I sort of have them here in order of uh, how common they are. So 3, 4, 5, you're going to see that all the time. And uh, notice that it's the same. If I multiply all these by 2, then this becomes a 6, 8, 10 triangle. That's really just a 3, 4, 5 triangle that's been doubled in size. So it's worth memorizing these four sets because they are so common. So if I see a 3 and a 4, and I already know it's a right triangle, I know the other one's going to be a 5. If I see a 12 and a 13, I know that the other side is going to be a 5, and so on. OK, um, so. Let's look back at our actual assignment. So we know that we have a right triangle, and we're given two sides. So without using the Pythagorean theorem, we should be able to uh, know the missing side. So if um, x is 6, so if this is 6, and y is 8, OK, what's the third side? Well, um, we were just talking about that. The 6 and the 8, that's double 3, double 4. That means the third side must be double 5 for the 3, 4, 5 pattern. Um, so this third side must be 10. OK, so z must equal 10. Um, what about the next one, 24? and 26. Let's write that down. y is 24, and z is 26. All right, let's compare those numbers to what we have from our triples. OK, now I don't see a 26 on any of these. However, look at this one. OK, imagine if we doubled each of these, what would we get? 
All right, well, if I doubled these, I would have 10, 24, and 26. Okay, and looking here, I have 24 and 26. All right, that means the other side must be 10. Okay, so x must equal 10. Okay, what about the next one, 16 and 30? X is 16 and Y is 30. 16 and 30. Clean this up a little bit. Hmm, 16 and 30. Now I don't see those numbers anywhere, but can you tell which one of these um, could give us a 16 and a 30 if I had multiplied? Did you see this one? If I double these, all right, if I double this, that's going to be 16. If I double this, that'll be 30. And if I double this, that's going to be 34. Okay, so I had my 16, 30. The other one must be 34. Okay, so Z must equal 34. Alright, last one. X is 24 and Z is 51. Um, so what must Y be? Okay, I don't see a 51 on here anywhere. Okay, so it must be a multiple situation. Now, if I were to double these, um, here's what I would get. This would be 6, 8, 10. This would be 10, uh, 24, 26. This would be 16, 30, 34. And this would be uh, 14, 48, and 50. Now, none of these involve a 51, of course, because if you're doubling something, all you're going to get is even numbers. So um, the thing is, we're going to have to triple. And do you see the 51 now? Of course, it's right there. So looking back, all right, we have a 24 and a 51, what's the missing side? So 24, 51, so the uh, other leg must be 45. Okay, so Y must equal 45. All right, that's gonna be long enough for one video. I'm going to do the rest of these problems on another video. So see you on the next video.